Registered Phenomena Code 248 Object Class Gamma Purple Hazard Types Extra-Dimensional Hazard Grouped Hazard Extreme Temperature Hazard Containment Protocols A perimeter fence has been established around the area of Greenland, within which RPC-248 resides. Anomalous entities and or constructs created by RPC-248 that are visible from satellites are to be digitally removed if identified. As diplomatic efforts between the Authority and RPC-248 are currently ongoing, a rudimentary ceasefire has been enacted along the perimeter of RPC-248's containment. No anomalous entities or constructs have left the containment area since the diplomatic efforts began, and as such, the efforts are to be artificially prolonged and labeled as a semi-effective containment method. The country of Denmark has been alerted to RPC-248's presence, although simply told it is a virulent effect of climate change. If RPC-248 ever becomes truly hostile to authority or other personnel, Denmark and the UNAAC are to be alerted to the full threat of RPC-248. Children of Nihil members slash affiliates discovered in Greenland are to be apprehended and interrogated immediately. RPC-248 denotes an anomalous entity capable of creating other anomalies through an unknown manner involving cold temperatures. RPC-248 has never been recorded alone, and has only been observed while accompanied by several of its anomalous creations, usually within a structure it has constructed. Specifically A-08 Physically, RPC-248 appears to be a partially non-anomalous humanoid male, with the exception of a semi-mechanical extrusion from its torso. This mechanical extrusion has on occasion, produced a multitude of biomechanical limbs not dissimilar to those of arachnids. These have been used as simple dexterous instruments by RPC-248, though could no doubt be used as defensive weapons should the occasion arise. RPC-248's apparent preference for long and flowing robe-like clothing has made direct observation of the rest of the entity's bodily structure or anatomy difficult. The entity is believed to be capable of partially altering its own facial features at will, as it currently bears a striking resemblance to the deceased British singer-songwriter David Bowie. RPC-248 has shown great admiration for Bowie during an interview, assumingly causing this choice in appearance. All constructs and entities created by RPC-248 share common defining traits, the most notable of which being a uniform red coloration. All constructs, such as buildings, are seemingly constructed from sheets of ice, structurally similar to glacial ice, though demonstrates an anomalously high melting point. Though only one of these buildings has been explored see addenda, its exterior architecture is notably similar to the works of Anthony Gaudi, a Catalan architect. This, combined with RPC-248's physical appearance, has led some researchers to believe RPC-248 is simply imitating talented artists, which it has discovered. How RPC-248 discovered either of these men is currently unknown. RPC-248 asserts that it is the ruler of its own independent micronation, and is willing to negotiate with other state actors to a degree. Prior to communication with Authority personnel, there have been recorded instances of entities under the control of RPC-248 operating alongside two specific groups of interest, the Children of Nihil and an American naval vessel under technical authority of the UNAAC. Discovered via the Internet An investigation effort was launched in mid-2002 as to what RPC-248's involvement with the Americans and subsequently the UNAAC actually was, which resulted in an interview with Thomas Ridge acting Secretary of Homeland Security at the time. Interview with Thomas Ridge Interviewed Thomas Ridge Interviewer Agent Dell Williamson, MST X-Ray 6 Forward Interview was conducted in an authority-owned apartment complex in Las Vegas. Begin log The two sit, Ridge immediately looking uncomfortable. There a problem? No, just an unorthodox place, that's all. 
it's an unorthodox interview. Sure is. Well, get to it. I've got a meeting in two hours. Hmm. Do anything in Greenland lately? With Denmark? No. I shouldn't think so. Why? So nothing offshore then? You mocking me, kid? No, sir. Just carrying out the interview. Well, there's no funny business with Denmark, I'll tell you that much. Nobody said anything about Denmark, sir. Just Greenland. Right. Right. Yeah. Let me guess. You and your hippie group just watch all of our boats? Yup. God damn it. That's illegal, you know. Actually, we were asked specifically by your own government. Not doing anything in Greenland, you hear me? Nothing. Kinda cold up there, don't you think? No. What does that have to do with it? Where'd the boat go, Ridge? It didn't go anywhere. They took it. And that's a matter of state secrecy. Who took it? Those terrorists. Your damn infinite knowledge should tell you that. Childs of who-whats. Now how do terrorists steal a U.S. warship in international waters? It was… I think the captain went mad. Frankly, joined him. Out of curiosity, did you ever see any pictures of it? Yeah, duh, who do you think I am, some secretary? What color was the water? Well, it was… red, now that I think of it. That'll be all, Tom. End log. Closing Statement Further investigation into RPC-248 and the children of Nihil ordered following the interview. The United States government has refused to comment on any of the aforementioned events. Curiously, the UNAAC has henceforth claimed the event was a hoax and that the Authority had received faulty intelligence. UNAAC personnel charged with active oversight of the Greenland region have consistently declined to comment on RPC-248 activities, though remain supportive of the Authority's efforts. Few anomalous entities created by RPC-248 possess sapiens, and most function as semi-independent workers or maintenance units charged with the construction and repair of RPC-248 constructs. Many, if not the majority of these entities, reside within a confined group of anomalous structures, not visually dissimilar to a city, though this assumption has not yet been validated. Of these structures, the most notable of which is a large spire-like construct wherein RPC-248 resides. To view a comprehensive list of the numerous anomalous species created by RPC-248, see the following attachments. RPC-248 Anomalous Entity Catalog Object Designation A-01 Worker B Threat Level Not Applicable Object Description A-01 denotes the most common anomalous entity created by the RPC-248, with the bodily plan reminiscent of Tunga Penetrans a parasitic insect found in subtropical climates, with the exception of two hominid-like arms extruding from the front of their torso. Notably, entities possess a functional body temperature well below zero degrees Celsius, resulting in various ice formations upon their carapace exterior. They have been viewed hauling various pieces of ice, corpses, and dead plant life to varying locations. Lacking anything short of a rudimentary communication capability, it is assumed they act based on pheromone cues. This is only assumed due to their seeming lack of coordination, caused by the pheromones reacting poorly in cold temperatures. Object Designation A-02 Crawling Trees Threat Level Non Applicable Object Description A-02 refers to another group of entities which share A-01's negative body temperature, appearing less frequently than A-01. Physically, they appear as a collection of ice crystals, which slope upwards in a cone-like structure. Beneath the crystals are a collection of assumedly thousands of small insectoid-like legs, which permit locomotion. Though they lack any visible sensory organs, A-02 have been seen moving into strategic positions within specific forest regions, apparently in search of resources, which can be harvested by other RPC-248-created entities. A-02 are visually similar to mundane pine trees, save for their material of construction. Before negotiations with RPC-248 began, A-02 instances had been located inside commercial buildings in Greenland during the month of December. Following the commencement of the ceasefire with RPC-248, 
all A-02 entities have returned to the containment area. Object Designation A-03 Fog Machines Threat Level Yellow Object Description A-03 is an uncommon subspecies which resembles hominids, though constructed from mechanical components and red ice crystals. Heads of A-03 take varying forms, though in all cases are comprised of local animal skulls. Occasionally, though this is uncommon, red huge fog will emit from within the skulls of A-03 instances, presumably to hide other anomalous activity. It is unknown where RPC-248 gained the knowledge of how to create mechanical humanoids, even partially so. Object Designation A-04 Flying Monkeys Threat Level Red Object Description A-04 designates the most hostile of the entities produced by RPC-248, and one of the most biologically complex, by non-anomalous standards. A-04 is structurally and visually similar to a range of non-anomalous primates. A-04 possesses a rudimentary sentience and has demonstrated a capability for ambush tactics. Notably present are two chitinous extrusions from their backsides, forming enlarged butterfly wings, which bear stylized patterns similar to those found on Danius plexippus. Monarch Butterfly Though non-aerodynamic and structurally unsuited for lift, A-04 instances have demonstrated a capability for unassisted flight nonetheless. As such, A-04 have been recorded acting as soldier units in the interspecies hierarchy and were the main anomalous entities present for the Children of Nihil acquisition of the aforementioned United States-UNAAC naval ship. Object Designation A-05 Insurgent Snowmen Threat Level Red Object Description A-05 is one of the rarest creations of RPC-248, and one of the most dangerous. As the entity is capable of altering its visual appearance, and bodily structure to closely mimic those of humans, their original forms are unknown. A-05 has only ever been recorded wearing assorted articles of clothing, selected seemingly at random from their local environment. A-05 will attempt to hide in crowds of people or busy public areas and eavesdrop on conversations, though their strange manner of dress and apparently poor understanding of human social cues makes them comparatively easy to identify. Possessing anomalously amplified strength and dexterity, all recorded A-05 instances have avoided containment simply by fleeing from personnel. Alongside this, on the singular occasion an instance of A-05 was viewed without clothing covering an area of skin, the agent viewing it later died of severe unexplained brain trauma. It is unknown if clothing can fully contain its effect, and as such, a warning has been placed on this document. Object Description a-06 Bug Truckers Threat Level Yellow Object Description Usually found carrying a collection of A-01, this species, which resembles an arthropodal creature with a body shape similar to a turretless M-1 Abrams main battle tank, acts as a freight hauling device. No pictures have been taken of this species, as they were usually hostile before the containment perimeter was enacted. Their carapace, like other species, is host to numerous red-hued ice crystals, with the exception of two crab-like ice stalks found towards the front of their shell. Object Description A-07 Magic Spectacles Threat Level Not Applicable Object Description A-07 are a group of mechanical constructs, around the size of the average human head. Physically, they appear as pairs of generic polarized sunglasses from a variety of brands with the anomalous capability of flight. These are usually recorded floating above other working entities, are regularly observed moving between structures within RPC-248 containment area. They are assumed to provide RPC-248 with some form of surveillance capabilities, and are susceptible to the same red ice and crustacean as all other created entities. Following the truce and subsequent containment of RPC-248, a diplomatic effort had been ongoing between it and Project Lead Dr. Harrison. Harrison was initially charged with establishing cordial and friendly relations with RPC-248, an effort which has proven successful. This personal interaction is generally attributed as one of the main reasons RPC-248 has been so cooperative in containment efforts. 
Following initial contact with RPC-248 by the Authority, the entity constructed a large platform suitable for use as a helicopter landing pad on one of its ice constructs. Though this has made physical interviews much easier, the reasoning behind the creation of this structure has been withheld, leading some researchers to believe RPC-248 may have other motives to its diplomacy. The logs of prior diplomatic sessions may be found below, though accessible only to those with level 3 clearance. RPC-248 Interview 01 Interviewed RPC-248 Interviewer Dr. Harrison Forward As this first interview had not been entirely planned, the beginning portion was not fully recorded. Begin log You turned it on now? Yes, I did. Good. I was worried we'd have to do it all over again. I'm reading off a clipboard, I hope you know. And it makes it terribly boring, hun. Mm-hmm. So you claim to be the leader of your own micronation, yes? Well, that's rude. It wasn't always so small. Care to elaborate on that? Nope. RPC-248 grins auspiciously, indicating a joke. This isn't a video, I hope you know. It's not. I was gonna smile for the camera. Anyways, assuming you are the leader, what involvement did you have with… the Sun Boys? The children of Nihil, yes. Well, they like bloods. I, by extension, like water. We got along just swell. And you're aware that, in accepting containment, you'd cease activity with them? Sadly, but you're a much more interesting group. How so? Well, I'd never seen anybody who wanted to put everything in boxes as vehemently. I beg your pardon. Like the dedication, short stack. I'm six foot… Okay, carrying on. Do, yeah. Are you aware that you're not legally recognized as a sovereign nation? Well, you never gave me much of a chance. That's intentional. Your less experienced friends definitely thought otherwise, though. Again, elaborate. Boys with a long acronym, you know. The United Nations? Bingo! I never remember the names. You're aware the UNAAC and the Children of Nihil don't usually cooperate, and that this is highly unusual? I am a good public speaker. Elaborate. Am I allowed to say no again? Well, technically yes, but… no. You. Dr. Harrison's reminded via pager that they should attempt to follow the list of pre-prepared questions. Oh! What's that thing do? Ignore it. Anyways, do you know the limits of your anomalous capabilities? Well, according to a cartoon, I can't beat Batman. Are you referring to the character Mr. Freeze? Dry humor. I like it. That wasn't… Next question, please. Getting a little hot out here. What significance does the color red hold? I'm so glad you asked. I don't know. It looks intimidating. No significance? Think of it like free brand recognition. Next one, come on. Why do you look like David Bowie? Why wouldn't I? That's not an answer. Isn't this a diplomatic meeting? You already agreed to the containment terms. Now it's just an interview. Will you be coming back, hun? I'm asking questions, but yes, I'm assigned to your containment. Come back next month, then. End log. Closing Statement Although the next interview was scheduled for three months afterward, it was sequentially deemed unwise to ignore RPC-248's request. Dr. Harrison expressed reasonable contempt at this decision, as their marriage ceremony was scheduled just three days prior to the new date. RPC-248 Interview 02 Interviewed RPC-248 Interviewer Dr. Harrison Forward as this was after the containment perimeter was established, Dr. Harrison was flown in via helicopter. Begin log. Very cold in here, you know. Well, that's the point. It'd be awful if someone installed a heater. Is that a joke, or would that actually do something? I'll leave that one up to your boss. Well, to your dismay, I brought another clipboard. And I see you brought something else new. RPC-248 briefly moves forward grabbing Dr. Harrison by the wrist. A ring! Who's the lucky gal, eh? Not a gal. Oh, a man of interesting taste. 
I've gone after both men and women in my time, you know. I'm sure they loved that. They mysteriously died of hypothermia, the poor sods. No idea why. RPC-248 winks, returning to its previous position. Still not on camera. Bet they'll write it down. Be like a sitcom, or the secretary. Do you get cable TV up here? Is that an actual question, or are you joking? Both. No, we don't have cable. I tried calling a cable guy, but Spectrum doesn't do business with demons, as they put it. Is that a genuine quote? I'm sure you'll find out eventually. You know, I have to write all this down. Yes, it's like you've got pens for claws there, scratching on the clipboard. Can you even read? Not your language, no. That's vague. Yep, makes these conversations more interesting. Well, don't be too vague. Wouldn't want to disappoint my boss. You never even ask any personal questions. Like, let's see, my name for instance. Do you have one? I should certainly hope not. Is that a joke? Yes, laugh. Dr. Harrison fakes laughter, RPC 248's visible dismay. What? That part was also a joke clause. Oh, anyways. You don't have a bad cop to help you? That certainly made this go smoother. My bosses deemed that having a bad cop, as you put it, would be detrimental to our relations. I guess hitting me over the head probably would have gone south, huh? You watch cop movies? Occasionally. Next question. That wasn't… anyways. Did the UNAAC ever specifically contact you? No, but them and the Sun Boys certainly had chats. Of what nature? The fun kind. Why else would they give me a boat? I thought they took the boat back. Only to a point. I'd go get it if you weren't such interesting friends. You did cease communication with them like we asked? Of course. I wouldn't betray my new best friends. And you're aware the Authority isn't technically a public nation, yes? But you're the dominating force on the planet, right? Like a secret Illuminati government? Bad comparison, but yes. Then you're the only people I'd want to be friends with, for my new kingdom. Pardon? The parasite latches onto the biggest fish, you know. Please don't suck our blood, as it were. Of course not. First I thought the UN whatever was the biggest fish, then you appeared. If you discovered a group bigger than us, would you breach containment? Of course, but I wouldn't immediately discount our personal friendship. So you never interacted with specific members of the UNAAC or the Children of Nihil? They were very cold. Oh, phrasing. People you know. Not like us. They're much more fun to talk to than the Doomsday Cult or the gruff politicians, yes. But I'm sorry to say, this isn't how we usually treat anomalies. Well, I'm a very important man. I'd expect nothing less. So you're saying, if we treated you like any other anomaly, you wouldn't have agreed to containment? Oh, I would have tried fighting you, yeah. Luckily our burgeoning friendship prevented that. I believe that'll be all for this interview. Goodbye. Congratulations on the wedding. Anywho, send my best to the groom. End log. Closing Statement Despite the former statement made by RPC-248, nothing was ever sent to Dr. Harrison's husband. An investigation was further launched into the UNAAC's collaboration with the Children of Nihil, but nothing has emerged. Addendum Dr. Harrison returned for a third interview wherein their goal was to further document the structure that RPC-248 resides within. This interview, the most recent interaction with RPC-248, may be found attached below. RPC-248 Interview 03 Interviewed RPC-248 Interviewer Dr. Harrison Forward This interview, unlike others, was recorded via a camera placed in Dr. Harrison's glasses. The intent was to document the architecture of RPC-248 structures. Begin log. Well, well, Mr. Claus, how's your hubby? Afraid he's got a nasty cold, Snowy. That's a shame. He should have come to me. I would have given him a good one. RPC-248 looks directly at the camera within Dr. Harrison's glasses, winking. You can see the camera? 
This doohickey in my chest isn't the only cool thing I've got going, Claus. Well, that's foreboding. Don't worry about it. Like I said last time, you're a much more interesting guy than those robots. You don't get out much other than this, huh? Well, I can't. You asked me not to. It was rhetorical, Snowy. But I'd like you to know, I've been completely faithful to our little agreement. Well, that's good. It is. Haven't offered anything to those doomsday guys or the you, you, I, no, that's wrong. U-N-A-A-C. Yeah. Or them. You ever get that cable guy in here? No, I didn't actually. I don't suppose your Illuminati bosses could call him? That's beyond even our capabilities, sorry. Uh, well, that's a shame. Got your pictures? That I did. Be seeing you in the next few months? Afraid not, unless something happens with the investigation. That's a shame. Well, goodbye, Claus. Don't give too many people hypothermia. Analog. Closing Statement It is assumed that the containment of RPC-248 has disrupted what was a temporary alliance, as UNAAC personnel were seen fighting the children of Night Hill in a latter operation. It should be noted, however, that the U.S. naval vessel apprehended by the two groups has not yet been found. 